Hello, we're here today on January 22nd at Indian River State College in Fort Pierce to talk with Jim Matthews and Ian Schwint about the Florida Band Directors Workshop. Gentlemen? Well, uh, the workshop started when Mike Antman and I were preparing for a clinic for FMEA and uh, we were sitting down at a Panera Bread or something like that. And uh, the materials were just too much. And he said, or one of us said, we should turn this into a workshop. And so he said, at the end of the clinic, let me put a little URL code there. If anybody's interested in doing that, let's see what happens, you know. Would they be interested in doing a longer extended workshop day or two? And so after the clinic was over, then um, he went back up to his hotel room and 26 people had said, I want to go to this workshop. And then just kept growing from there. So then we started to put a faculty together and we started to find out where could we have this event, where could we host it. And we went through a lot of planning for that. So we invited Ian to be a part of that workshop. Um, and then uh, about a year later, we asked if Alex Kaminsky would join that. Right, because Jim and Mike are incredible idea people. Uh, and so they just think of all this stuff, and then they look at me and they say, okay, Ian, we're going to invite this you work. in. You there do we it. go. How do you, you make this going. work? It's like, well, what are we doing? And so we, we did. We put it all together, and we did start with just basically 24 hours. It was a 24-hour thing. And we threw everything in there, and we realized it's a lot more than 24 hours. Yes. And that's what we started explaining. And then Jennifer Zahn works with Ian. So she came in and helped with the planning part, and Charlene Cannon was working with Mike Antman. And so, so those, that group of people, we have been doing this now for six years, will be this summer, and uh, making a tremendous impact. And so we know that it's really helping out the membership of FBA. It's helping out everything with, with BAN. And it's really just an extension of FBA sessions that happen. FMEA is incredible, and we get so much out of FB, FMEA every time we go. Mm -hmm. But I know that we both talk about, and the same thing is true of Summer Workshop, those FBA events always leave us wanting more, whether we're a clinician or sitting in the room. Mm -hmm. If we're sitting in the room getting from people, we're like, oh, we're just getting good, and then we have to stop because it's time for the next clinic. Or when we're presenting, like you said, there's just so much more to say. Yeah. Well, this workshop is an extension of FMEA. Well, the summer, summer uh, FBA summer conference. This is just for a chance for us to go really deep into those sessions and those topics that we talk about every year. Mm -hmm. So a big premise, uh, Tina, that we wanted to make sure was that every band director shows up with an instrument, a primary instrument and a secondary instrument. They are going to have hands-on. It is a band setup. We have breakout sessions where we go into a rooms and do um, you know various clinics throughout the time there we have them bring mouthpieces from every instrument so that they're going back to college basically and you're just going to be inundated with just information from these master teachers I mean it's really crazy I tell some people sometimes and I hope that I don't offend them but I if your band doesn't sound like Ian Schwinch's band or Alex Kaminsky's band or Mike Antman's band then we probably should be at this workshop uh, we have a lot of new teachers there and so for them, there's a shock factor we always talk about. I went to college, I listened to the classes, but reality happens and you're going, I wish I'd have paid more attention in college. I mean, is that what you find out? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because we get great information, but we don't know that it's important information at all. Yeah. So you got to soak them back in all that and then say, here's how I would do the warm up. Here's how. So each person gets up and, and, and takes their chance. Um, uh, you know, talking to the to the people, and we're performing together. We've just recently, last year, added a jazz component to it, and it was awesome. So all the people got up. It wasn't scary, but Mike assigned us all into different groups, and then we broke up, and he gave us you know sheets and gave us you know little licks to play and everything, and everybody performed uh, an improvised solo, and it was awesome, and that was really big hit on there. So we're doing. Uh, Communication with our hands, there's some conducting stuff in there, although it's not a conducting clinic, but we talk about it. How does it affect the band? Um, we do proper warm-ups, all the various instruments. Um, yeah, we're talking about classroom management. Classroom management Because there's some times stuff. we do put the horns down, 
Well, let's talk about classroom management. And we're definitely calling on people, getting ideas from everybody. Yeah, the four of us are kind of standing at the front, mm -hmm. talking a little bit, but it is super important to us to hear what's going on in everybody else's room. Because mm -hmm. that's how those ideas get shared. And that's really exciting to us. We're talking about student engagement, recruitment and retention. Mm -hmm. Everything that we want to do, and we talk about it in those sessions, but what's really great, and the big reason, one of the big reasons we do it in Titusville is that there's a church in Titusville, Park Avenue, and they're basically donating us their space for these four days that they let us do this workshop. We set up the full band setup, and it sits there. And, and in the sanctuary, they're like, here's the <laughs> sanctuary, you got it for four days. That's right. And then uh, they actually have, and I, I want to call it a dormitory, but that's probably not a great way to say it but they've got a, a retreat center for people to stay and it's beautiful. Every room is decorated by a different family of the church. It's gorgeous. And so you get a, everybody gets to stay in there, two people to a two room. Two floors and, and you know, mm -hmm. so it's like 24 rooms or something. So if you're doubling it up, you can house 48 people there. Uh, and then we have all of our meals together as well. So. And so these sessions happen. We get to hear different people talk and then everybody gets to go out and discuss it with each other. Mm -hmm. So we get to hang out, there's different hangout spots and in the retreat center that people are just sitting around in chairs and couches and talking about it. We have a dessert <clears throat> night that we bring in, a bunch of desserts, people sit around. And then, uh, we, let's be honest, one of the highlights. <laughs> I was just gonna raise my hand. Thing, right? One of the highlights of the whole thing is that Bernie Hendricks mm -hmm. does <laughs> his incredible barbecue, Amen. brings it to us, and one of the great things about Titusville is the water. And so there's this beautiful, huge gazebo. We go out there and it has a full kitchen, and we just sit outside for an evening and just enjoy each other's company. The fellowship, we have a chance to talk to each other and get really full, because mm -hmm. it's really good food, and I always eat too much. But, um, <laughs> but we make sure that we're building that into the Florida Band Workshop, is it's not sit and get. It's you do and you experience. Mm -hmm. And then we challenge you to find people to talk about it with and find thought stretchers. John Maxwell described thought stretchers. Find somebody to talk about, what are you thinking about? Mm -hmm. What would happen if, oh, that's such a great idea, have you considered? And we just keep stretching each other all the time. I think Alex Kaminsky said it last year. Alex goes, I cannot come to this workshop without learning mm -hmm. every single year. And it's not from Jim and Mike and I, it's from the participants. Mm -hmm. And those kind of things, and those connections happen all year long. It's a lot of feedback. So we are constantly asking them, what are you, what's going on with your situation and how do you hear it? We also want to make sure that we are, we are available for every single participant. That's huge to me. So I say to, to the group of participants, would you sit and talk with anybody if they have any questions? Yes. Alex, would you sit and talk with anybody? Absolutely. Mike, yes. Me, Charlene, uh, Jennifer. And so... A first year teacher can sit with the FBA president, right, and just say, here's my program, what would you do? What kind of literature would you play? How would you approach it? Or sit with Alex or Mike or any of us. And it's hands on and accessible. So they can pull us aside anytime. We can't do that necessarily at FMEA or, you know, the works, the Florida, um, the um, summer thing, summer convention, because people are going from clinic to clinic. We want to make sure we're there for people. And it's a community. We've had some people come every year, and every time I'm there, he gets back up and he does a questioning thing, which is incredible. How do you keep your kids engaged? We grew up with a dictator on the podium. We all did. And you just did what they told you to do. We want to be in the minds of these students. We want to find out what's going on in their mind. What did you hear? How did you feel? How would you fix that? How do you tell that percussion player? What do you think? And so you keep your class really alive and engaged. And here's me. I'm taking notes, pages of notes, and I've heard him do this clinics, and I've heard Mike and Alex and all of them, and I'm just taking notes every year, every year. So it's like a community. We want people to come back, and so there's a lot of people that have been there several years, and they're like, this is home, and the expense is super cheap. It sounds like we're advertising, or we're not. We're just saying, this is what we provide. This is a setting. I've been a band director for, this is my 37th year. And I've never had to bring my instrument to a convention, right? But I go and I learn. But if I have my horn in my hands, how much more am I going to learn? So we did it with the summer convention. 
when we had some of the uh, in Daytona, we had a couple of directors and everybody brought their horns and they got to get up and do that. We do that's what we get to do for four days. We go back to school, and we equip people. So people ask me, well, what's what's the effect? What happens? Because like the church says, well, how does this affect these people? Because we're donating our facilities and everything. We have our meals together, and we kind of just take over the church for four days. How does this affect people? And I go, if one person came, one person, and they taught 150 kids a year for 30 years, it's a lot of students. So for me and my program, every five years was another 1,000 students. That's a lot. So we added it up, and we figured between the three to 400 people, band directors that have been to this workshop, if every one of them taught only 150 a year, the effect is that 1.5 million students, if we never taught this workshop again, 1.5 million students would have been affected by the teachers that attended that workshop. That's a lot, the ripple effects, just by changing one teacher. So we just hope everybody would get involved. If you haven't been to one of these things, get in here. We want, to, we want the participation from everybody. And we've had, we always end it with a survey. And we always ask, and everybody talks about, man, I'm really tired. This was a tough school year. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Doing another thing in the summer, I just don't know. That's tough. It's a lot. Every single person has left the workshop and said, I can't wait. I wish school started mm, tomorrow. Tomorrow, right, right, right. I'm ready to go right now. They've got so many great ideas, and that's, that's really our goal, is not to weigh people down with more things to do. Here's more stuff to do. It's more about getting excited about our whys. Why did you become a band director? Mm -hmm. What do you do it for? And I know so many of us lose that. I lose that because I'm, I'm worried about the grades and I'm worried about getting the kids in the door and I'm worried about and the list is forever long. But the why is to teach music mm -hmm. and to affect kids' lives. And that's really what we want to do is just help everybody be better at your why. Why did you become a band director? Well, let's get better at it and be more fun for us and the more fun it is for us, mm -hmm. the more fun it is for those kids sitting in front of us. And that's really what it's all about. We love, we're such band nerds. Can we say that? You are. Whatever. <laughs> we are. We love band so much that we just can't help it. Yeah. We're so excited to get to do it. And, and so any opportunity is great. And, we, and, and it really comes together during these, these few days. Mm -hmm. And then we took another component. Band directors sacrifice themselves, they sacrifice their families, they sacrifice their health, they sacrifice their growth time in their own personal being. And I said, could we put a component, don't know where we could put it, about how do you care for yourself? How does a band director care for themselves? How do you get up in the morning and get ready to go face that day? And so we added a component in the morning so it's before the actual clinics start. So we have yoga classes, for real, man, to see Alex Kaminsky on the floor trying to do stretches is hilarious. But anyway, um, so we have a, a mental time, a mental, you know, or a spiritual preparedness time. You could take a walk around the property. Some people do runs, you know, they do the runs or whatever like that. Or, or you could join with a group of people there. So how do you get ready for the day? You know, and then we have some exercise as well. And so everybody does that. And then you show up to breakfast and then you attend the clinics. And people are asking for more. The list at this survey at the end, this was great and you all did all this, but can you do this and this and this and this now? And you, we can't, you can't. They want to go back to a four year college again. But this is the closest thing to going back to school in reality. The reality of the everyday classroom for the kids and it's all kid based. How do we affect kids better? How do we get into this stuff? How do we prepare ourselves? How do we uh, plan better? You know, um, anyway, so with all that, it's extremely enriching. We're exhausted by the end. We bring in a percussion player, teacher, he's amazing. So everybody's playing percussion instruments, mallet instruments, and all that kind of stuff. Everybody's conducting, teaching. They're doing all the stuff and playing. And then they feel like, okay, I was exhausted from the year, like you said. I didn't really want to attend, maybe necessarily, but this was great. And going back to the cost, I tell them up in front of the group of people, no, nobody should be paying for this. 
No one should be paying for that. It's really cheap, by the way. Could your band parents pay for you to go to be renewed every year? Could your administration pay? Could your PTA pay or whatever like that? Now we got uh, sponsors that are starting to sponsor band directors. Counties, the, the uh, music resource people in counties are sending groups. I will pay. Do you have 10 spots from you know Orange County or whatever like that? And so the, even the groups, they're realizing the need for teachers to be retooled, if you could say that, or encouraged or enriched. Some people are crossing over. I teach orchestra, I teach chorus, and now I have to teach band classes. What do I do? And they attend that for three or four days and they go, I've got it now. And so it's, we're just excited to be able to share. So that's about yeah. it. And, moving, and going forward, from those suggestions, we've never had two years in a row the same. Nothing. <laughs> it's different. Now, there are certain components. The jazz thing happens. Yeah. We talk about certain things, but we do it completely different. We rotate on who's going to talk about what. It's like a warm up. You warm up every day, but you don't do the same thing every day. So no two years have ever been the same. That's right. And it continues to grow, and we continue to move it. I think we found our sweet spot. We did the two days. We did three, but really the four days start on Sunday afternoon, and then we get done on Wednesday afternoon. Sunday. Or is it Monday? Monday. Yeah. We start on Monday. I don't know. Whatever day Jim says, Ian, you need to be here, that's Monday. the day I show up. Monday to Thursday. Yeah. Right? And so then we found that to be a sweet spot, but it's always different. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be different again. And, and the sense. relationships that the participants have had, and that what I was going to say also, they stretch their relationships from all over the state. Because we do these little regional things, right? You know, you get to know the people there. <laughs> now they're getting, because of that, also the state. And we've also committed to them anytime during the year. If you got a question, call us because we want the community. How many bands have you gone in to rehearse or judge that were participants? They send us recordings, all of us, they send us recordings. So here we're applying the things that you all taught us here. What do you think? And we're hearing the level boom, 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 boom rising. How many people have told you, I used to get straight whatevers? and now I'm getting straight what they want. They used to get what they didn't want, now they're getting what they want. How many times have you heard that? A lot. A it lot. Happens. A lot. A lot. One girl said, was it straight fours or straight threes or something like that? And the next year after her first time participating, she got straight superior. She never, that school had never received a superior before. That was down Fort Lauderdale or somewhere. Anyway, and they're like, they call us Papa and stuff like that. No. <laughs> so anyway, we just want to make sure that everybody knows about this. It is, how do, how do you pass that up? And this is not Ian stuff, Jim stuff, Mike. This is stuff that we learned. Mm. We're, we're just bridging from all the stuff that we learned from Bobby Adams, mm. things that we learned oh, from man. Jack Crew, things we learned from Dr. Croft, all those things. Mm. I mean, that's just, we're just passing on information. That's our job. Yeah. That's the responsibility that we've been given is go. Yeah. Just continue. We're just passing it on. This is just a great chance to do it and yeah. an opportunity to have those things happen. And it helps everybody out. And that's what we're here for. So. Yeah. Well, that is fantastic. Now, how did, you, how did you pick the staff? How have you found a staff that works well and can work in rotation like that how did you find a group of people who all believe the same mm. and who are all willing to give the same instead of, I know this and I'm going to keep this for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Well, that's the heart of it. So you, you, we picked according to the hearts. But Mike Antman and I got a chance to work together many, many, many years ago. And then from that point, we would sit down every year and just take a time, a meal or whatever. We'd say, hey, can we get lunch together? And the lunches were like four hours long. And we're taking notes at our lunches. I'm not a nerd like Ian is, but we would take <laughs> notes. And, uh, and then we would leave that just like, I can't get, wait to get back. And that's just the two of us. He is a legit logistical master. I don't know how to set any of that up. He would run my summer band every year for my school, and I go, Ian, where am I supposed to be right now? And he's got to go over there and teach this group of people. He just sees the whole picture of the whole week, and he plugs everybody into all that kind of stuff. And then he makes us cry every year as well, too, because of the heart. Why are we doing all this? Why are we spinning so many plates and trying to put them all up in the air? And he'll tell stories about 
the impact on the kids and stuff like that. I don't know if I've ever done one of your speeches where I'm like trying not to wipe my eyes and everybody see me crying, but that's the deal. But everybody's heart is the same thing. It is not about our heads. It's about the kids and what do they need? What do they need from us? I'm going to mention one other thing. Alex Kaminsky has been to Midwest like four times, and now he's this masterful college teacher. Every time he gets up in front of those groups, it could be a first-year teacher. The feedback he gets is, first of all, when you said this, I'm stealing that from you. You know, he's like, he's always inputting it to people, and I'm not sure if everybody really sees what that is. His heart towards students and teachers is amazing. And they're like, Alex Kaminsky just said he learned something from me. So the staff is all like their hearts are just 100%, not necessarily even to each other, but it's all about kids. We've all had a chance to work together because mm -hmm. um, Alex is really the one that got Mike started because when Mike, first year teacher was Alex's feeder and Alex spent a lot of time with him. And when I was a first year teacher, Jim was already experienced and uh, but he got me going it and, and we trained those things and then we all had a chance to work together. And then Jennifer with Jennifer you, and Charlene was with Mike too also and they taught together and all that. Right. So this doesn't definitely wasn't a hey we're gonna put a workshop together, let's grab people. Yeah. It's we've been working together for years already. We all knew that we shared those same common visions. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we agree on everything all the time. It's fun. I'm gonna say it, it's fun to disagree sometimes. Uh, especially when I know I'm right and Jim's wrong. I was just going to say, man, I'll so, chew on it and go, how do I screw that up, right. man? <laughs> but uh, no, but it, but it is. And those are good things for people to see, too. Yeah. But it's okay for people to have different and we, ideas. We've seen the group watch something happen bantering up front, and we just watch them. Are they really going after each other on this thing? And then they're finding out where do they fall within the whatever, whatever the, it is. But anyway, so it's a great group of people. The participants are amazing. They just are. We learn a ton from them, too. And it's just like, okay, and everybody's skill levels are going up, 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 up. And so I think that's the power and the impact. But the kids are the benefactors. If I get better, when I get up front, mm, that's what it's all about. I find it interesting that you named a group of fine, fine directors that you learned from. Mm. And they're gone now. Mm -hmm. They live on through you. Mm -hmm. You've accepted the wisdom they gave you and the desire to pass it on. Do you feel like it's stopped at this level or that there's another group mm -hmm. coming along that may, may continue to have Jim Croft mm -hmm. talking through them. Mm -hmm. So we just had a conversation. This is so weird you asked that. My wife a couple of weeks ago asked me, she goes, who do you look up to? Who's, who, who, who's your mentor? And I said, that's a good question because I haven't been asked that in a long time. When I was young, I could have named 20 people, but they're not here anymore. And so I threw that to him and we talked about that, and there are some masterful teachers right now in the profession. As a matter of fact, people go, this generation of kids and this kids and these kids, we don't see it. We see some things. I'm really hopeful for our kids because they're brilliant, especially when you pull in ideas and everything out of them, and it's not just you dictating to them. Brilliant. But there are, and so this weekend, as we're here for all this event that we're attending right now, I'm going up to those people that we have identified as people we look up to. There's a bunch, and they're here right now. And so I'm saying, do you realize that we look up to you, you are up here? And I've always said this, and you gotta say something. Wouldn't it be cool at FMEA if we all could wear a jersey one day, and on the jersey would be all the names of the people that built you? There's not a self-made man or woman on the planet Earth. <laughs> But, you know, to have Dwayne and to have Bobby and to have those conversations with Jack Crew, Bentley Shellahammer, all these people here, uh, and Dr. Croft and all the inputs, so we need that next wave for generations. But I want them to know their impact. And so we're starting to name people and talk to them, but it's a major deal for us. Yeah, and I, I do believe it's going to continue on because we're Amen. seeing incredible things happen 
at the next generation, the five-year band directors, the 10-year band directors. I mean, there are incredible things happening. So yeah, I do believe it will continue. It happened Absolutely. in the clinics at FMEA just, just this last weekend. Last weekend, it was like, wow. And I didn't know some of the names of the people. And when I sat in their sessions, I'm like, that's a rising star. We have a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. There will be a wave hitting big time. So I have a lot of hope. Great question. That's, that's, that warms my heart mm -hmm. also. We're not in trouble. <laughs> We're not in trouble. I don't, really. Well, I know you've seen impacts on your generation of band directors and perhaps the next ones coming up. Oh, you know you're talking about two generations. Yeah, two completely right, different generations he's, because... And I'm way yeah, young. Right, yeah, right. Well. You're, you're the baby. Right. Oh, okay. no. Yeah. Even though you have more gray hair. There you right. go. Yeah. Gonna, you said it. <laughs> I'll take it. I'm just asking. Okay. Anyway, we hear complaints about the kids these days. Mm -hmm. What about collegiate, high school, middle school, even beginner band? Is it those kids these days? Or is it another wave coming? Oh, I, I think it's another wave coming of great things. I mean, I, I don't I've never heard a generation say kids these that, that didn't say yeah. kids these yeah. days. <laughs> it's always been the same thing. Do we have to adapt to where they're coming from? Of course. But that's always been the 100%. that's been the teacher way. Meet the kids where they are yep. and bring them where they need to go. And you know what? The kids used to start over here, and now they start over here. Big deal. That's our job to change. We can't get upset by that. We just adapt, but they're going to go. We got ridiculously good kids. Mm -hmm. We have ridiculously smart kids in the mm -hmm. collegiate world, in the, in the high school world, in the beginning world, in the elementary world. They're there. They're there. If we're not reaching them, that's on us. And so we just need to adapt to where they are. But man, there's really great people. You know, I look at them as individuals. I can't say this generation because in every generation there's some monster people in there. You know, it's just the values that they're brought up with. But how many times have I bragged? We have in, in Brevard County uh, about eight or nine new teachers to Brevard. How many times am I bragging on them? I'm like, man, you can't wait. I can't wait for you to see or I can't wait for these guys to perform. They're there. And so, yeah, we could label a generation, but I can't do that. Never have been able to do that because I, I kind of like go to the delinquent kids in my class. <laughs> I love those kids. They have the most flavor, if that makes sense, you know, and I like Cajun, and you were those I like Cajun food, right? And I was that kid. So <laughs> my own two children came up through my band program. I'm like, why are you paying attention to them? And how did you let them do that? And all that. And they're like, kick them out. And I'm like, because they're me. And that's a leader. They just don't know what the leader is inside of them. So I go to those people, and I love it. But anyway, we have tremendous new teachers. Tremendous new teachers. So I have a lot of hope. I don't see the generation thing. I just see a bunch of individuals. But I do know what people are talking about. For instance, mm -hmm. the biggest thing when my generation, it was get married, find a school, plant roots, learn how to teach, start a family, buy a house, and make a major impact on your community. And today's kids don't necessarily want to do that. They don't want to commit. They don't want to do the marriage thing. They don't want to buy a house. They don't want to you know, be stuck somewhere. Uh, they don't want kids. They just want to do this for a little while and I jump here and here and here. So like you said, we have to adapt. We can't get angry at them. We just say, so how do we help and make that work? And we're doing it. So you're hoping, you're helping them find the joy mm. and the enthusiasm, mm -hmm. either again or for the first time. Yeah. And where they are, where are they in life, and how do we take it to the next level? It is every individual. So how does someone go about signing up for this workshop? I don't know. <laughs> yes, you do. I'm there's not a, the tech guy. I don't know how no, to do there's that. There's a website. You just search for the Floor Band Director Workshop, which is... A fine, but really would be awesome is reach out to one of us and talk to us. And we'll get you hooked up because we just love meeting new people anyway. Right, but we have a Facebook page. Yeah, and there's right. a participant page. So there's a Facebook page where anybody can find out about it. Mm -hmm. Then there's a participant page, and they can talk all throughout the year or years, share ideas and everything now that they've participated for at least one year. 
And then there's the FloridaBandDirector.com site as well. So there's the internet site and then the Facebook site. And so, and it has all the information and the schedule and all that kind of stuff in there mm -hmm. that we, we do and, and how to register and everything. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, our half hour has flown by mm -hmm. and it's time to get to the fine ending here. And say bye-bye. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you for all you're doing in this whole legacy thing. It's amazing how many people you put on there. That's your baby. And thank well, you for letting us be a part the, of this. I just got goosebumps. The, the, it's important to talk to these people now mm -hmm. so that they can talk to us. Yes, that's right. Yep. Perhaps later. Thank you so okay. much. Well, thank you. Thank you. And time to say bye-bye. All right.